that. I lost that. Hello, pray and share warriors. I am sorry I'm late. I got to playing games on my phone. But happy Friday to you, and it is Labor Day weekend, so I hope you have some plans to do some fun things. We went and ate at Dairy Queen today. That was our fun thing for Labor Day weekend. <laughs> That's probably all of our plans. I'll probably be home tomorrow and Sunday and Monday. <laughs> but... I'm going to be prepping for school on Monday. <sighs> but it was an awesome day today. I hope you had an awesome day today, too. Well, today we are going to do Psalms 12. So, we're going to do prayer first, of course. But I'm going to go ahead and turn over here to Psalms and get it ready. I don't know why I can't keep my bookmark in here. I keep taking it out. Okay, Psalms 12. Psalms 12 is also a Psalm of David. So we'll read that in just a minute. Let us pray. God, we just thank you. We just praise you for everything, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. And even when we don't understand things, even when we don't see you working, you are always working. You are always working. And I just want to praise you for provision that you gave us today. God, I feel like... Um, a blessing in obedience to something that I did earlier in the week. God, that's kind of how you work in our lives. When we give all that we have, you return a hundred times more. God, you are faithful and you are kind. And we want to thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. God, we just thank you that you are mighty and magnificent and powerful and miraculous, God. You are the righteous judge. Sometimes we forget that you are the one that will judge all unrighteousness. And unlike the judges here on this earth, you cannot be bought, you cannot be compromised, and you cannot be threatened. And your judgment will be swift, too. But God, also, you are kind and loving and caring and compassionate, forgiving, faithful, trustworthy, and patient. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we cry out to the, for the lost, God. We cry out on behalf of them. That, God, you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals to return to you. To repent and to never leave you again. We pray, God, for all the disasters. And I saw that the death toll of Hurricane Ida has risen because of New York and some of the other states that it's hit that it's hit lately with the flooding. God, I just pray for those families. I pray for peace, comfort, and strength for those families and friends of these these people that are now deceased. And I'm sure many are injured too. God, I pray for healing for their injuries. I pray for the thirteen of our servicemen that gave their lives, gave the ultimate sacrifice for many people. People that they didn't even know. I pray for their family and friends, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. I pray for the ones that we've forgotten that are recovering, our military that are recovering, God. We just pray for a restorative healing for them. And we pray for all the families in Afghanistan that have lost loved ones. I read last night, God, 
that the underground church in Kabul, that all of those people were killed, God. So now they're with you. They are safe with you, and they will not ever have to worry about any anyone hunting them down because they are in the place of perfect peace, love, and joy, and unity. God, with you. God, we pray for all the other disasters that are going on. We pray that you would meet these people's needs, that um, people would come to help them, and that they would see the loving compassion of Jesus, and that they would see the the um, hands and feet of Jesus. God, we just pray for everyone else that has left, lost loved ones in the past two years. God, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them, that they would um, feel your presence more, God, in the absence of their loved one, and that they would know, God, they would know where their loved one is. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, I hate this other camera. Not the one that I have Facebook on, but the other one that I'm doing YouTube on. It's just, I just can't get it right. I can't get the colors right. It's very annoying. But it's okay. There are more things that are more annoying than that. It's just that on my other computer, I guess my camera was better. Call her later. Hang on. Messenger is. Right, I can't do anything right now. Okay. Sorry, now I've really messed up because. Oh. Gotta get this out of here. Okay. I'm just gonna put it over to the side. Like I used to do it with my other computer. But I'm going to send my daughter a message too. I just remembered how to do that. Okay. All right. Psalm 12, man's treachery and God's constancy to the chief musician on an eight-stringed harp, a psalm of David. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and a double heart, they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips. And the tongue that speaks proud things who have said, With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Well, that sounds like a lot of what we see right now with the pride of people, not the humility, but the pride. And... Uh, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. And God is going to, he will exact vengeance. All the people that have been mistreated, God will avenge them. I will set him in the safety for which he, he yearns. The words of the Lord are pure words like silver tried in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times, you shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. 
The wicked prowl on every side. When vileness is exalted among the son, sons of men. So there is a lot of vile things that are going on right now. A lot of things that are not pleasant to God. A lot of things that he sees as sin. All right, so let's read. Let's read. I didn't even write down what I'm doing today. It's been a weird day today. It hasn't been a normal day, but it's been a good day too. It's been good, but it's just been not my normal routine. But I read this the other day and I thought it was so good. First John 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. That is what we as Christians are supposed to be doing right now is testing spirits with the Holy Spirit as our discerner. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. So that's that's how you figure it out. Are they saying that Jesus has come in the flesh? Then um, they are of God's Spirit if they're saying that. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. So there is an Antichrist, like one man that is the Antichrist. But there is also a spirit of Antichrist that goes along with that man. Uh... Is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now already in the world. So that spirit is here. You can see that very clearly on the TV shows, on very many things. You can see that. The TV shows, the movies, they're, they're not godly at all. They're opposite of godly. And a lot of times they're blasphemous about God, they're blasphemous about Jesus, they're blasphemous about the Holy Spirit. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So we have Jesus in, in us, and he is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God bears us, hears us, and he who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So if you've ever tried to witness to someone and they just treat you like they don't believe you, they do not have the Spirit of God in them. But we are supposed to still try to witness to people. We don't turn our backs on people that do not have the Spirit of God. We keep trying to share the truth with them. Because sometimes we're all the truth that they're going to hear. Knowing God through love. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So all these people that are spewing all this hate, and it's not the Christians, we do not spew hate, then they are not of God. They can't say that they are of God and, and not have the love of God, is what this is saying. 
In this, the love of God has manifested toward us that God has sent his one, his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Seeing God through love. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. So if we abide in love, we are abiding in God, and God is abiding in us. And that is through our confession that Jesus is the Son of God. The consummation of love. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. In obedience by faith, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, now can how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. So I love 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Because it talks about what God wants us to do as his children. And uh, we have to love one another. We even have to love our enemies. We have to forgive our enemies. We have to pray for our enemies. These are the things that God wants us to do. He wants us to walk in love, not in hate. The opposite. So think of the fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians um, 5.22, I think it's Galatians 5. Anyway, you've got love. Well, what is the opposite of love? It's hate. So you've got love and you've got hate. And if we're walking in love, we're not walking in hate. And then you've got joy. Well, what is the opposite of joy? Well, that would be sadness. So if you're not walking in joy, you're walking in sadness. And if you're walking in the fruits of the Spirit, you're not walking in sadness. Love, joy, peace. Peace. What's the opposite of peace would be unrest. So we're walking in unrest instead of walking in the peace, which is the rest that Jesus gives us. Love, joy, peace, patience. Okay, so <laughs> if we're not patient, we're impatient. We want it now. We don't want to wait. Well, that is the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit. Kindness. If we're not being kind, if we're being mean, then that is opposite of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. If we're not being good, then we're being bad. And bad's not cool. Bad is disobedience. Bad is not, you know, it's not good in the sight of God. We need to be good. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. If we are not being faithful, we are being um, obstinate. We are being, it's another word for being not faithful. 
faithful. That's the opposite of faithful. We're not being gentle. We're being harsh. We're being harsh. Self-control. If we're not controlling ourselves, if we're being, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Opposite of self-control. We're out of control. We can't control. Can't control our eating habits. Can't control other things, other bad habits. Then that's lack of self-control opposite of the fruits of the spirit we want to walk in the fruits of the spirit and love is one of the fruits of the spirit that's the first one all right and if you think about the people that are following evil that are following the ways of the world they are walking in opposite of the fruits of the spirit and is it is it easy to walk in every fruit of the Spirit at the same time, it's a challenge. But we can do it. We can do it through God because we can do it through Jesus who gives us strength. I have on my, I have, this is what I have on today. This is what I wore today. Yeah. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. what I felt like we're in today. So through the strength of Jesus, we can. We can walk in the Spirit. We do need to love people. We do need to love our enemies. And that is a hard thing. It's a hard thing. Ooh, I'm going to read this. Okay, all about love. This is in the study part of my Bible. This is question. The source of love. The answer is God. Question, the model of love. The answer is Christ. Question, the, manif the manifestation of love by believers. Love for others. And we just read that. 1 John 4.21 The extent of love. Sacrifice of life. The results of love. Abiding presence of God in life. That is so good. I love this study Bible. It's really heavy. But I love it because it just brings extra things that my other Bible doesn't have. Okay. So how do we want to do our message tonight? I do not know. <laughs> how about between you and God? I'll do that tomorrow. Between you and God. Okay, there we are. I'm like, where's the beginning of this? Between you and God. This is the first and second part of this. Okay, our sin separates us from God. Oh, good. My fan is on. Whew. Our sin separates us from God. The light on the right represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving, and has provided a way for salvation. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin, separated from God. Sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Now, we talked about that. Uh, whatever the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit are, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, then that is, you know, that's sin. God sees that as sin. Um, 
the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we have. We have all fallen short of the glory of God and sin. Romans 3.23, apart from God's grace, man is without hope. We are without hope, without God's grace. So it says Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. 1 Peter 2.24 and 1 Peter 3.18 The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 there is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. All right. So this is the next part of this track. This part right here. We'll be talking about this. So after Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. Jesus is written, risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way. Only Jesus has paid the penalty God demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, God, except through me. John fourteen six. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life. So this is the next part. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Romans 3.22 Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? You can. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. If you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. All right, I'm going to say this prayer, but I'm going to leave some space so you can repeat if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior at this time. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior.
Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, it is not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Jesus today, Jesus promises you in John 10, 27, 28, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you should follow God and learn to please him. Here are some of his requirements for him, for you to grow spiritually. So we have all these symbols here. It's the same as the bracelet. This is the same company, the E3 Resources. So the heart stands for love God in all people. We talked about that love, that brotherly love tonight. And we talked about loving God and God loving us. So you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six through 40. And then pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And then the next one is study the Bible, God's word daily. Start with the gospel of John. Read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2.2 2. Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking your own assembly together, assembling, assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10.25 Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark sixteen fifteen. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior tonight, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. So again, do you read your Bible every day? And uh, start in Matthew or John. I would say Matthew. Read the Gospels first. Find out who Jesus is and what he did for you. And um, pray. Pray to God every day. And find some praise music. And praise God every day. Okay. Well, it is time to pray again. Um, I'm going to do the... God's blessing first in Numbers. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The whole world is seeking for peace now, but Peace comes from God. God will give us peace. Even in the midst of our turmoils, we can still have peace. All right. Well, I am going to pray and I'm going to get off of here. I need to go facilitate my son's dinner because he'll feed himself. I'm always saying I'm going to feed him, but he'll feed himself. I just need to prepare it. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you that you love us and that you care for us and that you have called us as your children. You have given us a plan and a purpose in your kingdom, in the work of your kingdom here and in your kingdom to come. God, we just uh, 
just pray for all the people that are sick now. I know several people that are sick. I know some that are healing. I pray for the ones that are healing. I pray for the ones that have just gotten sick. I pray for restorative healing for all of them. That their bodies will be just as good as new when they get over this disease that they have. God, we pray for the other people that have other sicknesses too. We pray for healing for them. God, we just pray for an outpouring of the Spirit. On all people that need to be saved, God. All over the whole world, in every country, God. There's like, Australia is locked down. I can't believe the freedom that has been taken from that country. And I feel like our freedoms are being infringed on more and more every day, God. Just please keep us free. It was so good to go today and to socialize with people that I didn't know. A few people had masks on, but most did not. God, we do not want to live in fear. We want to, we want to walk in faith and not fear. God, just please help us to um, continue to be free. Continue to be free to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. To thank people, to be grateful for people and what they do for us every day. And God, we just, uh, we just pray for all the Afghanistan people, God, that you would protect them, that you would send your angels to protect them that you would protect our retired military that are over there, that they have put themselves back in harm's way, God, to help others, to fulfill promises that they made while they were over there. God, please just remove all the obstacles that they face from our government and help them to be able to get those people out of that country and out of harm's way. I believe they will end up being the true heroes of this story. I believe that there will be miracles that happen in the desert in order to free these people. And I don't know who we got in on the planes, but very few of them are Americans and very few of them are interpreters. So there is no telling. So please protect us, God. Protect us from the people that our government brought back over here. Just help them to help the people in charge to have the discernment, the guidance and wisdom to vet these people and see who they are before they let them loose in our country. God, please protect this country. I know at times it does not deserve it because there have been some horrible things that have done, been done in this country. God, I feel like you have a remnant here that loves you, that follows you, that follows your ways, that walks in love, that walks in truth. And God, please uh, protect us. and Just help us to be the servants that you need us to be. Help us to work for you and to work for you um, not begrudgingly with joy. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, I've got to call my daughter and I've got to go fix my son something to eat. So um, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome Saturday. It is a weekend. So if you're going out and celebrating Labor Day, then please be careful. So much love. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.